lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you? Ah, oh, pretty good. Good. Um, we may be a little ahead of time here, so if we miss some important news, it's because we recorded before the date we published. <laughs> yeah. Thought I should get that out there up front. <laughs> yeah. Kate, you know, just so people don't think if like something like you, crazy happens over, like yeah. in the next day or two. <laughs> yeah. And people yeah. are like, why the hell aren't they? They arrest talking Joe about Biden, that? you know, yeah. we're not talking about it. <laughs> Donald Trump is assassinated and yeah. something stuck yeah. through an airplane engine as Adam Curry keeps yeah. anticipating, whatever. Yeah. Um Yeah, so uh so yeah, we're we're recording early. This is yeah. this is not live. <laughs> yeah. Actually. Yeah. I say so, recording live in the intro. I don't even know what I say. <laughs> it's I don't become think so. such a habit that well, I, don't... <laughs> I yeah, I'm pretty sure we intentionally didn't put recording live in there. Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully, I, I'm not sure. It's still but, uh, live to tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no real. I mean, there's no tape anymore, but yeah, but we record it and then pretty well post it. You know? Yeah, so. um, just a, a few little minor. Make sure the sound quality is good. Yeah things yeah, basic stuff yeah so so we are recording the day after 9 11 yeah so it is 9 12 this is 9 12 yep so well, what did you want to yeah. say about that i don't know um, you're the one that brought it up it was so. it was interesting <laughs> so i didn't get to watch a lot i had to work a lot yesterday so i didn't watch a lot of the coverage but you know 9 11 is always kind of a big day in this country since all of that happened um and uh, it was weird to me, like, listening to the coverage, because there's still, like, if you listen to the mainstream media, like, the narrative that was predominant at that time is <laughs> still kind of the narrative that they push now, is, you know, they hate us for our freedom, mm -hmm. you know, like, that's, that, you know, that was the reason behind 9-11, that's the reason we had to go over there, so we fight them over there, so we don't fight them over here, like, <laughs> all of that garbage is still so out there, and it's, it's just irritating after all this time, because I'll be honest, like, after 9-11, I was one of those people, too. Fight them over there so we don't fight them over here. Like, I don't want to have this problem. Like, this, they, they did this to us. Let's go get them, you know. Uh, but as time went along, like, a lot of people, like, I learned more and, and have such a better understanding of all of that now of what happened. And it's just so frustrating to see the mainstream media not... It's like they it's it's because they're complicit in it. Like they knew in real time what the truth was, but they were told to put out this narrative, so that's what they did. Yeah. You know. Well, and the the main thing is that um that we were already fighting them over there. And that's the reason they started attacking us over here. Yeah. Um and that's I mean, that's really just kind of on this 9-11 or post 9-11, that's just mm -hmm. kind of the message I want everybody to kind of remember is that, you know, regardless of what the mainstream is telling you about this, like that's that's the reason they attacked us. Yeah, 9-11 didn't happen in a vacuum. There were things that led up to that. If you read Osama bin Laden's fatwa or whatever, it was, his, his declaration of war yeah. um, against the United States, uh, it was mostly about... Um, the U.S. having bases in Saudi Arabia and the Holy of Holy Lands for for um, Islam, um, and launching uh, bombing attacks from there into Iraq. Yep, um, that was a big part of it. And then it was support of Israel in their oppression of the Palestinians um, was the was the other big thing in there. Yeah, um, but that's mainly it. That we were, you know, he we had bases in the Holy Land that we were using to kill Muslims. Yeah. And had been for a long time. Yeah. Well, and it, it's not like you would expect us to be like, oh, well, we, we didn't realize this would be so offended, offensive, so we pulled it back. Like, you wouldn't mm -hmm. expect that exactly. Yeah. But what we did in response was just ramp those things up to an incredibly higher level. Yeah. I mean, going into Afghanistan, Iraq, everything we did after 9-11, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's... It, the the point, though, for me at least, is, I mean, those things didn't make the world a safer place. Oh, no, no. Um, and even, even if you wanted to take the narrative that they were, which we know, like, is, is stupid, but the whole, you know, they hate us for our freedom. Like, mm -hmm. what was the first legislation after 9-11? We started taking away the freedom. Yeah. So, 
Well, in, in a sense, that's what got me into politics. Um, it was when they, the, the update to the Patriot Act went through, the USA Freedom Act, yeah. which was like, I don't know, 2015 or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's, that's when I actually got into politics because I started looking into this thing and then the, and what the Patriot Act and the USA Freedom Act, which was even more restrictive. <laughs> exactly. Um, Every one since has been worse. Yeah, was, was doing to the Constitution and what was supposed to be, you know, the freest country on earth. Yeah. Um, and it's just, uh, I, I think what'll kind of be the theme for the podcast today is just how effective fear can be at getting people to give things up. Yeah. And, you know, this is the, this is a real strong example is nine 11 is the fear of being killed by terrorists where actually, if you look at the statistics for the United States, like if you're a resident of the, of the United States, you have, I'm pretty sure it's like you have a higher chance of dying from slipping on ice yeah. than from getting killed by a terrorist. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, it, 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 like the, the possibility is of, of a terror killing in the United States is so remote, well, but for whatever reason, you know, people were, were, you know, brought to such a state of fear that uh, that we started inviting the government in everywhere. Come yeah. into my home, read all my communications, listen to all my phone calls, keep track of me everywhere I go. Well, and this is something I please, really... Please, please, just keep me safe. Just yeah. keep me safe. Mm -hmm. This is something I really got into it with people about, like, after 9-11. Because while I was kind of for some of the... Not Iraq, but I was for the Afghan war. Like, I was like, dude, we need to go get them. Like, this is... We're not going to have this. Yeah. Um... I was never like the Patriot Act stuff. Like I fought Republicans on that, like because in my family, like this was a mm -hmm. heated debate because I was the only one at the time on the other side of that argument. That everybody was like, "Oh no, we've got we've got to give up some stuff because we can't have something like this happen again." And and all I could think is like, you really want to live in that kind of fear? You're that afraid of something like that happening again that you're willing to give up your freedom and your privacy for that? Well, that's the funny thing about it is that a lot of those same people, if you ask them now, they would say, oh. well, it worked. We haven't had another thing like that again. <laughs> well, so, I mean, a lot of these people are in my family. They have since came to the okay. correct con conclusion. But the the powers that be will make that argument. Um, the people that put this stuff into place will will absolutely make that argument to you that, you know, well, we haven't had another line 11 since. Yeah. And that's kind of the justification to ramp it up even more. Yeah, well, of course, the absurdity of that argument is that we didn't have a 9-11 before. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it is you know, yeah. just a one-off thing. I, I it, it amazes me that we're still fighting this war. I mean, the yeah. terror war is still ongoing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was uh, picking somebody up at the airport a while back, and um, they came down, and and I'd been sitting on a bench reading, and uh, and the, I didn't see them coming. <laughs> um, they're like, uh, well, "What are you reading?" I said, oh, "I was I was just catching up on the articles on antiwar dot com," and they said, uh, "I think it's funny that you're reading antiwar when we're not at war." I said, "You don't think we're at war?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've been at war for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> about seventy years by my calculations. I was going to say, yeah, we have one of the most active militaries on the planet. Like, mm -hmm. there's something going on somewhere. Yeah, you know. Um, of course, we hadn't declared one since World War II. We get to that was the other play thing. That I was vocabulary just, games. <laughs> well, and that was the other thing that kind of I don't know. I was thinking about it this morning. That seems strange. Is that after nine eleven? Like, we absolutely could have got a legit declaration of war. Like, the, there was enough people, and this country was ready for it. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if we, if they had Yeah, there actually, was enough outrage. There was, um, at least in Afghanistan. But I think that was kind of, I think that that was where they were smart about it, is that they knew, well, we can get an official declaration for Afghanistan, mm -hmm. but we want to do so much more. And they, they, and they knew that they were like, well, if we, if we only get an official declaration for Afghanistan, we can't get the rest. Yeah. Um, like, because at some point this is going to, people are going to get tired of it. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we're still going in anywhere and everywhere under either the 2001 or 2002, uh, authorization for use of military force. Yeah. 
Yeah, like exactly. they just keep shoehorning well, it into that was, whatever. That was yeah. their genius was mm-hmm. not getting just an official declaration written out with what what they could and couldn't do. Um, they just got this basically blank check that they're still using right now. Yeah, you know. Yep. Absolutely. So, I don't know. I mean, that was really all I kind of had on it, but. It's just weird thinking back on all of that. It was funny yesterday kind of watching the little bit of coverage I saw where they were like showing the old videos of, you know, where the planes fly in and different things. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's so weird for it, particularly me. It just takes you back to another time mm-hmm. because it, when, you, when I see that, I can like, it, it's like it, I remember the time before that, you know, yeah. it was just such a different world then. Same thing with COVID now. You're what, like 18? 19. 19. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I remember. So um, I was an EMT. I, I wasn't still working as an EMT at the time, but um, yeah. but it hadn't been long. I had only been not doing that for actually like maybe less than a year, I think. Yeah. Um, so I still had an active license and everything. Yeah. And uh, one of my roommates and I, we had a car packed. Yeah. Like we were ready to go up to New York and then they started announcing all over the place on the news, like, don't come here. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> we, but, we've got enough, we've got enough chaos. Don't come up here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we didn't, but, yeah. but you were ready. Yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, and I, I was uh, working night job at the time. Um, and so the phone woke me up in the morning it had just been ringing and ringing and I sleep light. Yeah. So it, I, I'd been hearing it for a while and I just kept wishing it would shut off. Yeah. It never did. So I finally got up and it was, uh, it was somebody that I worked with, um, who apparently got up earlier in the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, he was like, uh, can you believe it? That blah, blah, you know, he's like talking nonsense as far as I could tell. I was like, yeah. I don't, what are you talking about? Yeah. He was like, Turn your TV on. I think he cursed a little, but yeah. um, so I did, and that's how I that's how I found out about it. Yeah. And it was like right about that time that the um, that the second tower was hit. Yeah, and, my my yeah. story is kind of similar. My dad came and woke me up when the first one hit, mm-hmm. and was like, "What's going on?" Which is one unusual because like my dad wouldn't just wake me up for random events that happen you know but when when that happened he came and got me out of bed and was like hey you need to come take a look at this this is wild and like as we're watching it you know the second plane hit and it was like it was just like this realization yeah. when it happens like oh like this is this is where something's going on yeah you know this isn't just like a random accident you what's know? wrong with those air traffic controllers <laughs> yeah right yeah that was not the implication yeah. <laughs> you know mm. so yeah, it was a crazy day. Yeah. Um, so, then I had to go to work later. <laughs> yeah, me too. It mm-hmm. was, it was, yeah, and it was, it was crazy because, like, I remember having to leave the house to go to work, and like not wanting to leave the TV. Just yeah, because, exactly. Just glued. Just, just glued into mm-hmm. what was going on because I mean we didn't know what was going on, so every all the information that was coming out was like brand new, you know. Yeah. And you didn't want to miss anything because it because it, it just felt like it was so important, mm-hmm. you know. And it was like I mean yeah. It, it, well, it, I mean. That is one of those moments where nothing was the same afterwards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you knew it. Like, you could feel it. Yeah. Um, And it's a shame that nothing was the same afterwards. I I don't think we've been on a good trajectory since then as a nation. Um, But I shared a meme the other day. I don't remember specifically, but it was we peaked in the 90s. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Uh, The uh, Pinnacle of Human Civilization from Matrix. (laughs) From the Matrix. That's what it was. 1999. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's ridiculous. But looking back. It's kind of true. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I saw that. Um, When I when I went in to post the uh, um, my day late article on Substack. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Well, I I did want to I. I did want to include a little addendum from the last podcast, like something that I wanted to mention about the Africa stuff yep. that I didn't mention at the time. And this is only, it seems kind of like a non sequitur and, um, and really absurd, not in the context of the discussion that we were having about last week, but well, I'm not going to rehash all that. Well, one thing I will say before you do that is mm-hmm. so many things that are going on right now that are major 
it all ties back to 9-11. Well, I mean, this is terror war stuff still. Yeah. What's what's going on in North Africa and West Africa is still terror war stuff. Yeah. And and even like I don't want to go into a bunch of it, but even economically, like mm-hmm. what's what's going on this con- with this country and the at some point collapse that will happen of the currency or the economy or whatever the case may be. Like it really kind of draws back to 9/11. Actually, I can I can tie this directly to 9/11. All right. Um, beyond just the terror war thing, so uh, France did not support the um, uh, the U.S. war in Iraq. Yeah, I remember after freedom, 9/11. Freedom for us, man. Yeah. Um, so since then. I would say France has kind of been on the outs with the U.S. Like the U.S. government has never forgiven (laughs) the French for not supporting the invasion of Iraq. And um, so France has a long colonial history in Africa, of course. And so there is some just kind of general resistance to France, France's involvement, even though um, there's a currency that's backed out of France that's used by half a dozen or so African nations still and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, but there is like still kind of a sour taste in the mouth of, of many African nations because of the French colonial history. Yeah. Well, with this thing in Niger, um, the U.S. has not been backing France in this because it's France that got kicked out. Yeah. Uh, of Niger um, had uh, they shut down the embassy and sent all military out and, and so forth. Um, and France being a NATO nation and a European nation and a Western nation and a white nation and whatever else. Yeah. I am sure expected the U S to be on the side of to, France in this to just have their back. Yeah. Um, but now the U S hasn't been opposed to France, at least not openly. Yeah. But they haven't backed them either. Yeah. And uh, the U.S. has a, a big drone base in Niger. Now, at this point, I think Niger, the new government, has said, yeah, no more. Yeah. Um, but at least in the meantime, while there was still a possibility that the U.S. could maintain their drone base, it seems that they were perfectly happy to let France take the fall on this. Mm-hmm. Um, and in other places where France has colonial history. Um, so the U.S. could step in and fill the vacuum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I just kind of wanted to point that out, that, you know, it's good to be the friend of the U.S., I guess. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Adds its perks. Yeah. Um, Which is that you don't know if they're going to support you or not. Yeah. Because, and I I do think that a lot of, um, a lot of the disregard for France by the U.S. government goes back to that, not supporting the Iraq war. Yeah. 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 There was, I mean, a lot of folks were upset about that at the time. A lot of powerful folks Mm -hmm. were upset about that. So, yeah. And still are apparently. Yeah. I mean, of course you got a bunch of guys in government that are still upset with the Soviet union, even though it doesn't (laughs) exist anymore. (laughs) Yeah. uh, This is, well, and this is still fighting a cold war that ended 30 years ago. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's, and that's, a big part of the reason we just need new blood in there anyway. Mm-hmm. A lot of these same people, I mean, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, these people have been in power for, and it's on the Republican side too, like just yeah, yeah. forever, you know? Mm-hmm. So Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell. Or, yeah. yeah. I mean, the list goes on. Um, so our new state of fear or our, our most recent, um, real big one, I guess. Yeah. Uh, is of course the COVID pandemic. Yes. We talked about this a little bit last week, but I definitely wanted to spend more time with it as there's rising discussions about um, case counts and hospitalizations and lockdowns and mandates and get your boosters and the the propaganda is out. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, the the uh, the powers that be have made the announcement. We need to reboot this thing. We're doing it again. And and this is to me, at least, this is kind of the the lead up. Getting everybody ready. For what? For instituting lockdowns, masks, whatever direction, a new booster, like whatever. But it, I, th- I think, I don't know, you may disagree with me on this, but I do think that it has a lot to do with the election coming up and trying to get mail-in ballots again. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't disagree with that. I, um, I don't think that it'll be effective. I, I have... 
faith in people enough as a whole. <laughs> I mean, I hope you're I, right. I like that, I, I, I hope and pray you're right. Yeah. I don't quite have the same um, belief that you do. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, and I, and I want to, like, I want to believe that, Yeah. but I just well, feel I, like I, I've been proven back so many times. Yeah. Um, I, I know that most people don't have their noses in the data like I do. Yeah. Um, about this stuff, but I, I think that there's like a general understanding at this point that a, that a, a great deal of what was, um, what was told to us has turned out to be false. Yeah. Or at least without support. Yeah. Um, and especially as the, as they're kind of relaxing on some of the, the alternative media platforms, YouTube, Twitter, et cetera. Yeah. Um, the restrictions about what you can say about these things, uh, more of that information is becoming available to people. Yeah, in trickles. And and I look, I mean, it's already kind of started. Like I've mm -hmm. already started seeing, at least on Facebook, I'm not on a lot of social media. Facebook's really kind of it for me. Mm -hmm. But I am seeing more of the disclaimers. And, and I don't know, I mean, it's hard to see what they're actually just pushing down the feed. Yeah. Well, you even see with politicians like Joe Biden um, talking about uh, – you know, we'll get some vaccines that work this time, or I don't remember exactly what he said, but yeah. it was something like that. It like it made it yeah. like it was an admission that that the didn't first set of vaccines yeah. didn't yeah didn't stop the spread or, or yeah <laughs> at the very least it didn't stop the spread <laughs> right. Um, there was a big uh, meta analysis that came out um, a week or so ago about the effectiveness of masks yeah. um, by uh, a, a doctor's. Uh, Tom Jefferson and Carl Hennigan. Um, I actually listened to an interview with them, but the quality was really bad. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. All these people don't, I guess <laughs> we can put together a podcast with yeah. amazing sound quality and we're yeah. doing it in your living room. <laughs> medical. Yeah. Medical doctors apparently don't, aren't very good sound techs. Apparently you think they'd find somebody. So but. they're doing, well, you know, I, <laughs> I was actually, I was listening to Scott Horton in their defense. Okay. Um, I was listening to Scott Horton earlier today. He had an interview with Ron Paul. Oh. Ron Paul has his own YouTube show. He does. With good sound. Yeah. Yeah. His call-in interview was terrible was sound quality. Yeah. It was well, terrible. I mean, it, it is tough. I mean, we encountered that with our last That's one. That's true. So, I That's mean, we, working yeah. off, I felt like that was more just because we, you know, only done it at once. Well, guess, yeah, we'd never know. done the... Um, the Skype meetings yeah. uh, software. Skype, it wasn't whatever. Skype, but, but what that style of interview. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, well. All right. So I'll, I'll stop complaining. Anyway, the, <laughs> yeah. the sound quality was bad, so I didn't actually pull any clips, but I did pull some quotes. Okay. Um, and they were saying that the, uh, that there was no good evidence for the efficacy of masking. Yeah. And that the evidence that was used to, uh, what they use to um, inform the public policy. Now, this was on a, a, a UK news network that this, because these guys are British, I guess. Okay. Um, I think. Now I'm thinking about it. I can't remember the accent, but the sound quality was really bad. So, so who knows, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's anybody's guess. Uh, but anyway, the 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 what they used um, to inform the public policy on mask mandates. Uh, they said that the you know quote the evidence is abysmal. And they were talking about um, that in the meta-analysis meta when they were looking through this, that there were a bunch of uh, non-peer-reviewed journals that where uh, studies were published that they used to inform the public policy. Which is um, like pulling stuff out of air, right? Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> essentially, well... I mean, peer-reviewed is kind of the standard, right? For anything, you know, that's supposed to be a scientific journal. Yeah. Yeah, it's not very scientific if it's not peer-reviewed. Peer -reviewed, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the, they had studies where they had cherry-picked data, uh, and one in particular that they talked about. Um, they they essentially used two weeks of data to support their findings in six week or six months of data collection. <laughs> so that's the, if that ain't cherry-picking, I don't know what is. Yeah. So um, uh, Smirconish. Okay. Michael Smirkonish, you know this name? I don't. He's he's some media figure here in the U.S. He was confronting Dr. Fauci about this, yeah. um, and asking uh, Dr. Fauci like to defend the mask wearing. Yeah. And um, so I did pull this clip because this was pretty good quality. Yeah. So let's listen to that. Let's do it. 
Totally understood. There is a perception out there by many, how many, I don't know, that they don't work and that the data concludes that they didn't work in the first go round. Respond to that on masks. Yeah, well, that's not so. I mean, when you're talking about at the population level, that the data are less strong than knowing that if you look on a situation as an individual protecting themselves or protecting them from spreading it, there's no doubt that masks work. Different studies give different percentages of advantage of wearing it, but there's no doubt that the weight of the studies, and there have been many studies, indicate the benefit of wearing masks. No doubt, but no data. <laughs> I, I find it really interesting here. There's no way that didn't get picked up on the <laughs> yeah, microphone. Right. Um, I, I find it really interesting here that, uh, what was it that, um, that Dave Smith was calling him? Uh, Dr. Oh, Anthony Truth Science. Truth Science. Truth yeah. Science Fauci yeah. here is uh, advocating to ignore the empirical data and focus on the anecdotal. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what scientist tells you to do something like that? That Yeah, you know, the, the data says one thing, but don't you feel like the other helps? Yeah. Like, the, like that's, that's really what I take from it is like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we've got all this data and it doesn't really point to, you know, this doing much, but... Don't you feel better when you wear a mask? Yeah. Don't well, you feel safer? And especially at the end there where he says there's been many studies. Yeah. No, but this was a meta-analysis. This was a study of the studies. Of the studies, yeah. Like this took <laughs> all of that. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, a meta-analysis is when you take all the studies and you study them to come up with the conclusion yeah, from the studies that, that were done. Yeah, essentially you aggregate the data. Yeah. So it gives you a larger sample size. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, makes nothing but sense to me. Like, Got cats running all over the place here. Yeah, it's a little active in here today. <laughs> um. So it's just, so I wrote an article on Substack called why I don't no longer believe the science. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I capitalized the science. The science, yeah. Because this is, and I, a friend of mine got on to me. He's like, well, you know, your politics come through on your thing. I was like, so? Anyway. Well, it's, it's who you are. Like, I mean... I, you know, I've actually gonna, gone out of my way not to be very political on Substack. Yeah, and I get it, but it's it's still part of, I mean, and mm. it's true for all of us. Like, that's just part of, like, you can only filter so much. Yeah. Is my point. Yeah. Um, I, I think the issue is that I, I used climate change, the manipulations of climate change data and manipulations of COVID data uh, as two of my points. Yeah. Because those are the two most politicized things in science, I think, at this point. Well, um, and, and that was my point in the article, is that science shouldn't be politicized and that science isn't a collection of, of yeah. facts, like I've said so many times on this podcast. Not a collection yeah. of facts, it's a process. Yeah. Um, but, and it's a process of eliminating things. Not, yeah. 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 Uh, science progresses through elimination of possibilities. Yeah. Um, the only, uh, the only facts in science are the data and the data can be interpreted in multiple ways. Yeah. And so what the, the process of science does is eliminate those, th the interpretations that can't be supported through additional data. Yeah. Right. And so this whole idea of just like shutting down an argument is so anti-science. Like anytime anybody claims the science is settled, it's yeah. like one of the most unscientific things that can be said. Yeah. Um, and I know we've mentioned it before, but gravity is like my favorite example. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We still don't know how gravity works. Yeah. Like, New yeah. Newtonian gravity is under attack. Yeah. It has been the law of gravity for 500 years. Yeah. And it is under attack and it seems like it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or at least it's not the full picture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it's really frustrating here, though, to have somebody who is put up by authorities as being the authority. Yeah. Um, being so unscientific because it just, it, it even further um, erodes the public's understanding of what science is. Yeah. And it really frustrates me to, to well, no end because it's not that I don't believe in science. I absolutely, but like I'm a, I'm a big believer in science. You're a science guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the science is just a, a bunch of propaganda yeah. And, um, and he's, he's furthering that. And so when you have problems with people not believing 
or not understanding or whatever science, like he's, this is an example of one of the root causes is because he got out there and he never really explained to people what, what he was really, he never said the truth. That's actually what it comes down to. He was up there being a politician and a bureaucrat and not a scientist. And that's all he really is as far as I'm concerned. I don't think that he's a scientist. And I'll say just for my part, like Dr. Anthony Fauci, I have treated more patients than Dr. Anthony Fauci. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, like me personally. Yeah. I have treated oh, yeah. more patients than Dr. Anthony Fauci. Yeah. And I've probably killed fewer. Yeah. Wow. It depends on how many you actually attribute to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, he's definitely killed more dogs than you, right? <laughs> yeah, it definitely has. <laughs> <laughs> I never killed a patient either, just just for the record. Yeah. Um no patient ever died under my care. Yeah. Hey, that's that's something to stand proud on. Yep. So. I think so. Um, but at any rate, like he, yeah, he's eroding the public's understanding of science by getting up there and it changing over and over again and never really explaining that all of this is kind of unknown. This is our best guess based on what we have right now. It may change in the future, but he, he presented everything as absolute fact and then he defended it even after it was proven to be untrue. Like this mask thing, like people that are listening to Dr. Anthony Fauci and think that he's representative of a scientist are going to be so confused after this. Like, Oh, okay. So just like what people say about it is important data. No, no, (laughs) it's not (laughs) right. What Uh, can be measured is important data. And what can be measured says that masks don't do anything to, to curb the spread of this virus. Yeah. Yeah. Plain and simple. (laughs) And neither do lockdowns. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just, and neither does the vaccine. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) And actually all the data that they were touting at the beginning that said, well, you know, the vaccine, if you've been vaccinated, you're less likely to end up in the hospital or dead. Yeah. That all seems to be untrue too. Yeah. Well, and it, 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 like I say, once again, I mean, it's questions still out on questions still out, but I mean, there's, there seems to at least be some evidence that if you had the vaccine and the boosters to follow that you're mm -hmm. more susceptible to the, at least the later variants, the variants that are mm -hmm. currently going around. Yeah. Um, and this not, I mean, I've heard this kind of be put out there, but I'll just tell you in my own personal, like the people that I know that, that were very open about getting the vaccine mm-hmm. have all gotten COVID within the past month or so. Yeah. Now that's, like I say, that's very anecdotal, but, mm-hmm. but you know, that's what I've seen. Yeah. I, I'm on a don't ask, don't tell policy on COVID vaccines at this point. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, it's not something, I mean, I work with a lot of people and yeah. you know, a lot of the people that I work with that were getting it were very vocal about getting it, you know, mm-hmm. Um, and I tried to stay agnostic about it throughout the whole thing, really. Yeah. You know, I have my opinions, but I try not to let those interfere with my business. Well, I was talking to a friend a while back about how we presented it on the podcast. And um, he was saying, well, then I'm anti-vaccine. I was like, no, I never told people don't get the vaccine. No. What I told people was the things that they're claiming about the vaccine, they can't possibly know at this point. Yeah. They can't possibly know how effective it is. They can't possibly know how safe it is. The claims that they're making cannot be, they, they just can't know. Yeah. They, they may be true. So just go into it with the understanding that what's being said, they, well, they can't know for sure. And a, I had a lot of people come to me wanting my opinion on it. Mm-hmm. And basically what I was telling them was, you know, you just got to, you got to evaluate your personal life and your personal risk and make a decision based off that, you know, I mean, if you're a person that's in like a high risk category, yeah, mm-hmm. maybe, or if you're an older person, like, and I wasn't saying you absolutely should get, I'm just saying like, you know, evaluate what your risks are, but know that there are risks associated to getting it. Yeah. And that was what I tried to emphasize to people that is that there, there is a risk associated to taking this thing. Mm-hmm. And at the time we didn't know what it was. And I was like, I don't know what that's going to be. I mean, maybe it means your dick falls off. You know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but well, the the all cause mortality data, um, as they're starting to suss this out, is also showing that the the mandates and so forth did not have a positive effect. Yeah. On on deaths. Yeah. Period. I like all cause mortality. Yeah. And and I like the use of all cause mortality because um then you get the offsets as well. Yeah. So Yes, there may have been some lives saved in terms of people dying from COVID 
because of the mandates of whatever type. Um, but you, you need to, you need to also like calculate in the excess deaths as a result of mandates, particularly lockdowns. Yeah. Um, because you know, you can talk about like, we can talk about, you know, vaccine injuries and so forth. Like they definitely exist. They're, uh, they're oh, yeah. You know, they're I mean, I don't, out there. I don't know very many people that are disputing that at this point. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the rise in suicides, um, substance, uh, like overdoses, things like that, uh, you know, that are results of various psychological disorders that arose from being isolated, being, uh, you know, scared, yeah, terrified, um, terrified, isolated, um, you know, incapable of interacting with people like we're social animals. This is. This isn't important to cut down people's lives in such a way and being deprived of purpose in a lot of time, like people that lost jobs, economic stresses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like all the extra things that all the problems that were added into people's lives due to uh, lockdowns, particularly yeah. um, that resulted in deaths should yeah. also be calculated in. Oh, absolutely. And so I, I like and I like the use of all cause mortality. It is showing that um, as, as they're analyzing all cause mortality, they are showing that lockdowns, uh, vaccine mandates, mask mandates, et cetera, did not have a positive effect on all cause mortality. Yeah, and in some cases had negative effect. And it's something to keep in mind as you know this slowly starts to try to ramp up again. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Don't let them lock you at home again. Yeah. <laughs> Do not comply. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see. We've, we've got one more story that we definitely wanted to hit. And then we might have some extra time. We'll see. Um, but the uh, New Mexico, I, I know that a lot of people have covered this, but I could not let this one go. Well, I'll tell you, like, before you brought, I hadn't heard of this before you brought it to my attention, so maybe I'm the one living under a rock. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you, you got me on this one, but, yeah. and, and when you showed it to me, I was like, I can't believe I hadn't heard about this. Yeah. So the, the New Mexico governor, I can't remember her first name, Lujan Grisham, I think, Yeah. is her last name, last names. <laughs> um, she has uh, suspended the right to carry firearms in New Mexico for 30 days under an emergency order, or she has declared an emergency and taken on this power yeah. to uh, prevent people from carrying firearms. This includes people who have gone through what the state requires to get a license to carry a firearm. Yeah. This, this absolutely blows my mind. Like yeah. I just like when you were, I just, I mean, it, this isn't unheard of. Like, this has happened before. I was telling you, um, after Katrina, uh, New Orleans instituted something along these lines as far as um, people carrying guns and stuff, which at the time was just absolutely crazy to me that you've got people, I mean, the concerns looting, obviously, you know, that people are going to start looting these houses and the stuff that's, you know, that's been destroyed. And now you're not going to let people carry guns to defend themselves? Like, mm -hmm. just blows my mind. Yeah. Well, um, this was in response to, specifically, um, to an 11-year-old being killed in something like a road rage incident where somebody just, like, fired in Into traffic. Like a car or something. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and drove off. So we don't know who the perpetrator is at this point, as yeah. far as I know, unless, I mean. Unless something's happened, yeah. Yeah. Um, and killed an 11 year old and uh, and apparently firearms deaths are are up significantly uh, to yeah. connect it to the last story yeah. i would suggest that this is probably like the rise in violent crime around the country is probably the result of economic stresses brought on by the lockdowns and the printing of money that resulted in all this price inflation yeah. i was going to say the inflation is probably the biggest one yeah um, because the, uh, we've talked about it in our personal life, like the belt's tight right now, Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's tight around everybody. You know, I, I, I make decent money, not great, but decent money for around here. Oh, I do, as do I, but, but I don't feel not, like it. Yeah. But there's not a lot of extra. <laughs> no. Yeah. 
So, and I haven't really changed things. <laughs> well, that's and that's what's so frustrating about mm-hmm. it. And that's I think that goes back to why we're seeing the rise in some violent crime is mm-hmm. just because people are so stretched thin right now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, crime and poverty tend to be closely associated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's let's just play this little back and forth between her and the. Um, the press guy. Oh, my blood's already boiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll play the clip. Uh, the press guy's kind of difficult to understand at points, but um, hopefully you'll get it. And her answers are at least clear enough. Fair Again, enough. this is like not great quality, but it was better than the scientist. So All right. here we are. All right. You took an oath to the Constitution. Isn't it unconstitutional to say you cannot exercise your, your carrying license? With one exception, and that is... If there's an emergency, and I've declared an emergency for a temporary amount of time, I can invoke additional powers. No constitutional right, in my view, including my oath, is intended to be absolute. There are restrictions on free speech. There are restrictions on my freedoms. In this emergency, this 11-year-old and all these parents who have lost all these children, they deserve my attention to have the debate about whether or not in an emergency we can create a safer environment. You're talking about crimes. There are already laws against the crimes, so how are there right? But but again, if I'm unsafe, who's standing up for that right? If this climate is so out of control, somebody should do something. I'm doing as much as I know to do. All right, well, I mean, we've addressed uh, like a bunch of these things before the no right is absolute. No, that's exactly what a right is, right? Yeah. Like that's what makes it a right, right. is that it's absolute. <laughs> and of course the, uh, the, uh, there's ref- restrictions on free speech. There's restrictions on your, your freedoms. Well, no, not exactly. Like you can still be held liable for how you use those things. Yeah. But the freedom of speech is not restricted. Yeah. <laughs> At least and I can say whatever be. I want. I mean, yeah, I can be held accountable for the things that I say. Yeah, and that's but you fair. can't <laughs> not allow me to say them. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, so that's to start off with. But I'm just, I'm just blown away by this idea that she has as an executive here in the United States, where we guarantee a Republican form of government, and that's republic, not yeah. Don't think political parties, people. <laughs> yeah. Um, that the Constitution, that her oath, that... And remember, the constitutional rights that are enumerated, they're meant to be... They're natural rights. They're enumerations of natural rights. Yeah. They're, they are absolute. That's, that's what they are. That's exactly the point of them. Yeah. Um, and the idea that all you have to do to override the law of the land... <laughs> the the supreme law of the land and the constitution is declare an emergency. Of course, I mean, this isn't the first time, obviously. Yeah. But that she's just like saying that. It just, it blows my mind that in it, it just reeks of two weeks to slow the spread. <laughs> is is when I heard that initially, I was like, that's, that's what this is. It's like, oh, well, we just need, I just need these powers temporarily to get things under control. But it's one of those deals like, and then like two years later, we're still fighting over this, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's just, you can't give these people an inch, man. I think the one, I, I think the one part of it that really gets to me is the, the oath I take is not absolute. <laughs> well, then why take it? Then what was the point? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. do you think an oath is? Do yeah. you, <laughs> it, it just reeks of a complete lack of integrity to me, which yeah. which bothers me so much. Like, probably more than any of the rest of this, honestly. Well, I will tell you this, and I'll tell you this right here, right now. If I lived in this state, I would be working with every organization I could to do open carry rallies and to just— Oh, they have been. Oh, I, and I would be at every one of them. I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you right now. Like, they have been. And they, like, and they're come the, lock me up. Like, yeah, we the are going to fight this fight. The not doing anything about well, it Well, no, they won't because they support what, what's going on. Like, they mm-hmm. understand what the deal is here. They know the score. Yeah. Um, this, like all these, the, these children's deaths, as I understand it, uh, a vast majority of it is gang related. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Well, hey, I ain't for kids dying for anything. <laughs> of course not. But I mean, at the same, and as far as like the gang related idea, well, there's a fix for that too. Like if we do mm-hmm. something about the drug problem in this country, that will fix a lot of the gang problems. Like shut down the borders and arrest all the dealers? <laughs> you know, I mean the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, you shut down the dealers by making it legal. Like, yeah. I mean, like there's there's fixes for that. But, but the you for I, age restrictions in that case? This is, I, we're going to go down a weird well, path that, here, That's but. a rabbit hole, but I am like, and I get that. Mm-hmm. That's I. I would understand why there would be a problem with that, but I do. Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm all for some kind of age restriction on something like that. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not quite that extreme. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not going to get into that debate now. But no, that's I was just fine. curious. We, uh, for another podcast. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, the and her thing at the end that like somebody should do something. Yeah. It's just, <sighs> yeah. Well, and the, yeah. What, what's wild is is what she's doing will actually, more than likely, if she got her way, mm-hmm. would make things worse. Because yeah, because if you, you, because you because end taking, up with that. I'm well, sorry, I was ahead. just going to say, taking guns away from legal gun owners, mm-hmm. you can't take them away from the illegal gun owners because they're already not supposed to have them. The thing the guy said at the one of the questions he asked where he was like, "Well, we already have laws on the books addressing this." Yeah, is is the correct response? Mm-hmm. Like, why are you trying? All you're doing is taking means away from people who have the good intentions. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's kind of absurd anyway, because the, um, the the argument here is that crimes are being committed with guns, and therefore their response is to take the guns away. Yeah. But there's lots of things that go on that are bad that happen because of other things that you don't take. The, all right, so there's how many, 30-something thousand traffic accidents every year yeah, that I result in deaths? Yeah. Something like that? I'm sure, Like, yeah. the answer isn't to take away the cars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's even worse in this scenario because when if if she got her way and all the legal gun owners just well I'm gonna pack it in the safe till this is over then then the criminals are just gonna run roughshod. Yeah, well it's that old adage if you outlaw guns then only outlaws have guns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so or something like that. It, it's know, something like that. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, I, I just I, I can't get over that this has been going on and I hadn't heard about it. I know. Well, and the the you know one of the other bothersome things is just this this idea from an executive that if I don't like something, all I need to do is to declare an emergency and claim arbitrary authority to deal with it however I please. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not that's not a republic. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably an unpopular opinion here. Any any politician that makes this type of power grab mm-hmm. should just be drug out and hung. Yeah, like that that all it would take would be once, and they mm. would figure it out. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Like, <laughs> I mean, well, there's a case to be made that the politicians in this country are not sufficiently scared of the citizens. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. There's. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not advocating for anything like that. By the way, I'm not saying go do it. All mm-hmm. I'm saying is, is we that- do not advocate violence to achieve political <laughs> aims. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that. Like I do mean that. But well, I, that's kind of the core of the philosophy, actually. It, it like- is. <laughs> it is absolutely. So I'm not. All I'm saying is, is if it did happen, that it would fix a lot of these problems. Yeah. <laughs> if it became known that when they overstepped, that there would be, and I'm. I take it to the extreme, but there just there should be some form of consequence when a politician oversteps mm-hmm. this dramatically. And the thing here is, is she knows, just like we all know, like sure the courts may come in and overturn this, but there will be no recourse after that. Yeah. Like she's not going to end up in trouble, except maybe at the ballot box, but maybe mm-hmm. not because there's probably enough idiots out there that support this kind of crap. Yeah. Well, I think that um, that New Mexico is like two thirds. Blue, and she's a Democrat governor. So, isn't that where Gary Johnson was governor? Mm-hmm. Strange, strange world. Yeah. Um. Oh, I had something. Now I've lost it. Uh, I know that feeling. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Story of my life, right oh, there. Uh. So, and I, I've heard people in situations like this make cases that she's actually committing violence against these people, against the people that oh, should be able to carry and I, defend themselves. I wholeheartedly um, agree with that. And of course, we we do accept the use of violence to defend yourself from violence. 
Yeah. So I'm not going to make the case here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I advise that you don't um, <laughs> as your attorney. But they, <laughs> oh man, I just had some serious fear and loathing flashbacks right yeah. there. <laughs> oh, good. That was the intention. So that, that's awesome. <laughs> um, I, I, so this is, this is a dangerous, this is a dangerous um, power grab. Oh, absolutely. Really from her. And uh, of course, we you know we keep seeing the same kind of thing from the governor level up to the presidential level. Is that well, declare an emergency, do what I want. It'll take a while for the courts to sort things out. Yep. Um, in the meantime, I get my way, yep. and you know exactly, and everybody else be damned. Yep. Uh, it's it's a it's a real problem in this country. Mm. So. And, uh, and there should be, well, I, I don't know. We're just too, uh, as a population, we're too content, maybe. No, we definitely are. The, the fact that things can go on like this, and I'm sure that there's a big uprising in, um, you said it's New Mexico, yeah. about this. But what, whatever the uprising is there, it's not enough. Like I'm probably I'm, not. I mean, it's just not because there, no lessons will be learned from this from the political elite. And, well, that's, and that's the problem. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the problem is that the protests are way too peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate to say that, but <laughs> if but you want to get your way, you got to burn some stuff. Well, haven't yeah. we learned that? <laughs> we have learned that. Like yeah. that has been the lesson. Mm. But I don't know. We need real change in this country, and like I say, so I don't know if we wanted to try to talk about this or not. But so today they, um, I guess it was McCarthy. Okay. Said that he was that they're going to pursue. There, it looks like they're seriously pursuing um, impeachment mm-hmm. hearings for for Biden. Okay. Yeah, we've got like five minutes or so. Yeah, so this is uh, fine just time a to good to wrap. Up. Just kind of wrap things up on sure. kind of the news of the day as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just it's it's really to me it's really because this is Tuesday, November twelfth. Did we say that already? <laughs> yeah, we right. didn't. I don't think we fully announced it, but yeah, yeah we we alluded to it. <laughs> Recording giving the nine eleven talk from earlier. Re- recording Tuesday, <laughs> November twelfth. All right, go ahead. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, they're they're seriously pursuing, um, you know, impeachment against Biden because of the corruption in the family and like mm-hmm. that's like the whole thing. And I don't even want to necessarily get into that aspect of it. Yeah, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. We've anyway. talked about it at length, um, and everybody's talked about it at length. The thing I just want people to kind of step back and look at is. So, okay, so we're potentially fixing to impeach Biden. Trump was impeached twice. Prior to that, how many impeachments were there? I mean, I know, what, Clinton once? Was there mm-hmm. any before Clinton? I know there had to Nixon be. Nixon was threatened. Nixon, um, There yeah. was one in the 19th century, I think. Yeah, I want to say I remember something. Like, my history is not great on that. Yeah. But but my point is... You mentioned this as we were setting up, so I didn't get to do yeah, any research or anything. All, all good. But my, the point of the matter is, like, we we could actually, and time will tell here, we may never have another president that's not impeached. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think that this is going to become the norm and the standard. Um, and it's a dangerous game to, to play. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you're really treading on banana republic here and i know a lot of people throw that out there but but it is the truth like that is where we're heading here regardless of what you think of biden or trump this is this this is different well and okay so i'm not sure which i prefer the uh the two-party system where publicly they um they argue and debate and seem to be taking different sides where privately they're going out to dinner together and having a great time and pursuing the same agenda essentially. Yeah. Or the two party system where they actually do hate each other. Yeah. Which and, is where we're at now. And, and that and, seems to be, I mean, yeah. I, I think that there, I think that that's our big shift right there. Um, and the population has gone along with it and maybe that's the result. I mean, Maybe yeah. the, the fact that the politicians now hate each other, too, is the result of the population starting to view the other side as the enemy. Yeah. And so electing people that actually represent that. Um, yeah. Because that wasn't the case when I was growing up. No, And in fact, no. politics was something that the people talked about and argued about, but didn't get really that upset about. Yeah. Like didn't get angry enough to like cut off family members and friends and so forth. Like that certainly wasn't part That's of new. it. That's new. Yeah. And, uh, 
And so I think maybe the, the, the politicians that are being elected are starting to represent that because the politicians that are elected, especially at the national level, tend to be the more extreme versions yeah. um, of the people that are in the race because of the primary system. Well, uh, another factor that I think plays into all of this, and I'm pretty sure we've talked about this before, I'm sure we have, is that that it's the government is so big now. Mm-hmm. That that wielding that power is such such a thing, um, and that's that's how you. There is a way to fix this and kind of put the genie back in the bottle. Now I don't think it'll ever happen, but if you start reducing the size of government, mm-hmm. it becomes less divisive because right now the way it works is every four years we have an election and one side gets to beat the other side over the head. Yeah, and we've got to take that back. Uh, and the way the, there's only one way to do it. Like there, the only way to to put that genie back in the bottle is to start reeling some of that power back. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's the only answer. Yeah, the, except that the people that you're reliant on to do that are the people that wield the power. Exactly, which is the reason I say like that's mm-hmm. not going to happen. Um, and to your point about you know then versus now, now just feels more dangerous because. N- the situation we're in now feels like, well, all of this could collapse. Like with, with the politics being as divisive as it is and the, the wielding the power so strongly the way they do, like this all could come crashing down. Yeah. Well, that would be the, the best case scenario as far as I can tell. I, so I was well, thinking— Well, as long as it happens peacefully. So yeah. my worry is, like, so kind of what I think you're alluding to, like mm-hmm. if we have just kind of a, dis- a natural, like, dissolve of things, mm-hmm. that's one thing. But it just doesn't feel like it's heading that way. Yeah. Well, I I think um, that, well, I don't know. Um, You could see something like with the Soviet Union collapse here that did happen mostly peacefully. There there are um, governmental structures underneath that could keep control, the states. Yeah. Well, that was case. Ideally, that's what you would want is for a collapse of the federal government and as much as it pains me to say it, a strengthening mm-hmm. of the state governments. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would be a peaceful, natural transition. Now, it would be ugly, but it wouldn't yeah. be... I don't. Th- I think yeah. that it could and happen And it wouldn't be without. as ugly as the Soviet Union, where there was essentially no government underneath that central government. So yeah. um, it, it became chaos. Like, the organized crime took over the all those the little... Yeah. And well, little states and so forth. Yeah. 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 Um, for, uh, for years afterwards. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that you would see that with the collapse of the federal government here. Yeah. I, I think I that agree. you would see the, the states just start exercise, but see, but that's the way I think that it most likely happens Yeah, is that the states just start exercising their power to defend their people against the federal government. Yeah. Now the concern is that you have just a few states doing that and the federal government just turns its power on those states. Yeah. Like it's military power on those states. Yeah. Um, if you have kind of a general revolt about things that the federal government is doing, uh, that's not likely to happen. Yeah. Of course, that's not likely to happen. Well, that's, that's kind of it. Right. Um, I, the, you know, the hope would be that because of this strong division between the two parties that actually control everything, um, you know, a couple of nice things, some things that could happen is that a third, a strong third party arises. Yeah. That would help balance things out better. Well, um, like, like in the, the stupid rings of power thing, like, okay, the balance (laughs) between three is better than the balance between two. two. Yeah. Um, the, you know, what we would want obviously is if there's going to be a strong division between two rival powers that it just becomes ineffectual. Yeah. But that doesn't seem to be what's happening so far. In fact, the the federal government seems to be becoming stronger and more authoritarian the the deeper this divide is. Yeah. So Well, um since you mentioned the third party thing, so there was a some coverage yesterday on um third parties. It was a, a it was on one of the big national channels and it been a big thing on and so I actually was fixing to change the channels. So I'm going to watch this to probably going to talk about the libertarians. Mhm. Well, I was wrong. Oh. <laughs> so they did like a like ten minute segment or whatever, like a huge segment on third parties, and never once mentioned 
the third biggest party in this country. They yeah. talked a whole bunch about Yang and about what he's been doing and mm-hmm. this, that, and the other thing. They talked about Jill Stein, whole okay. big thing about Jill Stein. Green but, Party, all right. Yeah. Represented. But does ne- Yang even have a party name? Well, no. Well, yeah, he does. What's it called? I don't I can't know. remember, but he does. They do have a name. Okay. And they so mentioned they only the talked thing. about leftist parties is what you're saying. Pretty much. Yeah, they didn't. They did. But it was striking to me because they didn't even mention the libertarians at all, even though like a big argument could be made because they talked about the, you know, third parties playing spoilers and like mm-hmm. how it happened here and what they think could happen there. But it was odd to not even mention the libertarians because like the argument against libertarians a lot of times that I hear is that they play spoilers for the right or Trump. Yeah. You know? So it was, it was just weird. The data don't support that either. We're no, there's a whole lot of data, not supporting the conclusions (laughs) in this podcast. Yeah. Not from us, but just reporting on data, not supporting (laughs) conclusions. Our conclusions are well supported. Absolutely. (laughs) I don't know. It was just striking to me that there was that big a coverage and not mention us. Yeah. Um, which tells me that they're afraid of us, that they don't want to give us. Who was it? What was the outlet? It was channel three, whichever one is that ABC. I think so. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't have TV. <laughs> yeah, that, that was where it was at. <laughs> yeah. So um, the other thing I'd like to mention kind of as we close it out here. ABC, that's Disney, right? Oh, ABC. Yeah, it is Disney. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, is just, this is all kind of just food for thought for the Republicans that are fixing to get all jitty about in Biden, uh, uh, impeaching Biden. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get it because I, I, I do think, I think there's plenty there. So I'm not I'm yeah. not trying to just count discount that, but just bear in mind what we just talked about, how crazy this stuff is getting, and is this really a good thing or not? Uh, and and I don't know the answer because, like I say, we've talked about the problems with the Biden crime family agnosium. So I'm mm-hmm. not denying that they don't exist. All I'm saying is, is we're heading down a crazy road here, and we all need to hang on. Yeah. So it should be fun to watch. Exactly. <laughs> if nothing else, it'll be the entertaining, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, let's see. I expect to put this up in a couple of days at the normal time. Cool. That's my plan. That's the plan. That's Hopefully plan. it'll make it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be monitoring from the background. Okay. <laughs> Michael, did you put the podcast up? Michael, I haven't seen the podcast. <laughs> no, no. It'll get done. I promise. Okay. I'm, I'm, oh, I trust you. I'm fairly, I'm it's, fairly confident. I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in trust, but verify. Okay. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, but there's nothing else going on the week after that, at least not yet. Not that I'm aware of. Um, so we'll be back next week. And in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. Um, like and share, comment. Uh, you can email me anytime at michael at thelibertymike.com if you want to yell at me or criticize or send me a story that you think I should read or whatever. Absolutely. We just say hi. I don't, I don't <laughs> We care. like feedback. Um, yeah. And, uh, let's see, is that all the stuff? Oh, well, and of course you can find my, um, uh, sub stack at Michael's meditation or I, I don't know how I need to learn exactly what the URL is. I think it's like <laughs> substack.com slash Michael's meditation, something like that. Something like that. Anyway, um, I don't talk about a lot of politics there. It's mostly like travel stories so far, but yeah. you know, we'll see where it goes. It's going to seep in. And, uh, yeah, that's all the stuff. So, uh, we expect to be back here next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.